Welcome back, Bots and Bits fans. Today I'm privileged to bring you all a very early look at Robot Heroes CG02 Oversized Starscream. This is all thanks to the guys at Kiki Cool Toy Store on Taobo and Toy Bento. Given that this is a sample product, uh, joints, paint and finish may differ in quality from the retail release, so keep that in mind. As you may or may not be able to tell, this is the Takara MP03 colour scheme from back in 2006 on MP11, oversized and vastly improved. So just quickly, I'll compare some of the details with my uh, Junker Takara MP03. As you can see, they've matched up the white striping quite well. Uh, the striping on the shoulder of Takara matches here. They've even gone so far as to copy the double white stripe length on the forearm here. The Takara's, the MP03 moulds have these extra bits on the forearm, whereas MP11 doesn't, but they still stopped the stripes and didn't put any detail there. They've even copied the military logo on the one wing. Takara has a Decepticon logo, whereas this just has a star in the middle. Uh, lights are the same colour. There are the same details around the edging, the no step marks. The green colours are a little bit richer on the Robot Heroes, and it's the same with the blue. It's a little bit darker and a little bit more shinier. This has a slight matte finish to it, whereas this doesn't quite have that same finish. Let's get into some details about this guy. This is a sample, so it didn't come with a box, but I do have the box for the uh, white Starscream CG01, which is coming up next. Um, and the box is just a brown mailer box, and it is exactly the same size as a Yes Model Seeker box. Accessories that come with him are an oversized pilot, this smirking replacement face. This is the kind of thing that we want from Takara. We want different faces so our Seekers have a little bit of individual character. As you can see, the eyes are a reflective metallic ruby colour which just really pop when the light hits it right. And the face is a dark gunmetal colour to match the MP03. It is just a regular MP11 head, springy ears so it will transform. To swap the heads, all you need to do, tilt this back, grab it under the chin, give it a tug, grab the replacement head. Now it is a tight fit. Ah, oh, there it is. What a bitch that was, but worth it. Look at that smirk. That is just, looks absolutely perfect. And lastly, you get a flight stand for him which is really thick plastic. The detail is fantastic. Uh, underneath you have the actual flight stand and you get the clip for a Megatron gun, but no Megatron gun. Flight stand slots together really, really easily. And then sitting them on there, it's really simple. Same as all the MP11s. Peg it in, hook it on. See if he'll fit in my display, yep. There is a slight amount of wobble because there is a lot of weight on this one section, but yeah, you wouldn't want to do that too much. Let's have a bit of a closer look at CGO2. That face just looks amazing on. That is just absolutely perfect. You can see the vents have a little bit of a copper reflectiveness inside, which is a nice touch. Um, the black wash in the wings doesn't look out of place, there's no seepage or missed spots or anything. It's all very neatly done. And so are the printings under the plastic, the logos, the uh, no step markings around the edge. Um, the null rays look fantastic. They've got the white is just really smoothly applied. There's no lumps, there's no hairs or dirt or smudges or anything. On the intake vents though, I do have a bit of chipping and a bit of smudging, custom articulated hands, these aren't KFC knockoffs, they've come up with these themselves. Moving down they've got just regular MP11 obliques and crutch area. As you can see they have modified the legs, they've removed the open knee in the front. It is still a double jointed knee but they've just smoothed the front up there so it doesn't go the wrong way anymore. The black wash in the inside of the shins and on the knees is a little bit inconsistent. And down at the feet, they've, as you can see, they've extended the toe for a bit more stability. So let's get right into articulation. The head is on a ball joint, as we saw before. Um, it is on that hinge back there, but typically you don't want to put too much pressure on that. But if you did loosen up, you can get 
the head a little bit more forward and a little bit further back. Uh, the intakes can be displayed um, forward or back depending on how you like it. The arms have a very strong and loud sounding ratchet and inside the ratchet joint that is a screw and washer instead of a push plug which is a very nice change in my opinion. Those push plugs are very problematic. Arm outward is quite stiff doesn't want to drop at all. Bicep swivel is equally as stiff. It's got the double jointed elbow. No painted details inside the elbow on this one. Uh, the null rays are stiff as well, quite stiff actually. The wrist swivel, same level of stiffness all the way through. It's very consistent. The fingers are a bit stiffer. It's got a ball jointed thumb and articulated knuckles which aren't ball jointed they're all pinned but they are very strong and just quickly the other side is the same very strong not dropping very stiff very stiff these fingers are a little bit more stiffer at the palm than the other side Little to no hip rotation, so nothing to write home about. Uh, the hip ratchets, the, the spacing on these are exactly what I like. So we go one out, that is quite a good stance in my opinion, that spread. Sorry, the surface I'm reviewing this on isn't the most stable. There, like that. And then it goes out, so we've got one, two, Three on this side. This one just nah. One side on this will do three. That one wants to do two. Nah, it doesn't want to go any further. Uh, we have move these out of the way. We have forward, forward that far. Back, only back one. Maybe on the other side it's different. Nah, back one. Actually, since messing around with these ratchets for the last couple of days, um, I've discovered that there's a bit of dead space in between ratchet clicks. And you can see there's a bit of play in there. And if you click one up, there's still a bit of play in between those two clicks. Go back one, as you can see. And it's the same. Uh, on this side too. See, it's quite a bit, quite a bit of movement in between. It, it's still quite stiff, but it is, it is there. Something to consider. And then there's that double jointed knee I was telling you about. So the first ratchet gets to there. And then the second ratchet, so you can see that, also gets to there. So you can pretty much have him kick himself in the back. That's quite the range. When would you ever need that? But it is there. So we also have a stiff thigh swivel on both sides. And then, of course, toe swivel is really stiff forward and back. Thrusters are just as stiff and this heel section barely moves. You can see that they've altered the angle of the front toe and made it a little bit wider just for that little bit of extra stability probably to help disperse the weight. Compared to um, Takara, as you can see the angle on their star screen. See the difference? They've pushed it forward just a little bit more than Takara have. And they look like they're scaled up a bit more just to have a bit more surface area touching but very stable so let's get into a few size comparisons and here he is with Wei Jiang's MPP10 and that just looks absolutely perfect the scale is exactly what I was after and this is what I think a lot of people have been waiting for since buying MPP10 is a Decepticon to scale with him
And if we bring in MP10 and MP11, you can see that the scale is uh, pretty damn close. His approximate height from his feet to the tip of his wings is about 30, 31 centimeters. Here he is with the Tanaka oversized side swipe, and I think this scale just really, really works. It reminds me a lot more of what I saw in the cartoon than the Takara scale does. If I bring in uh, MP Thundercracker and MP side swipe, you can see the size difference is just incredible. He looks more like a mini bot to me next to MP11 like that, but I think that works really well. And here he is with the Collection Kingdom Oversized Grimlock. And he actually looks a little bit small now, if you can believe that. But if we bring in a Masterpiece MP11 and Masterpiece Grimlock, you can see that the scale is actually spot on. I'm not going to cover the entire transformation because it is still just MP11. I will show you the mold differences and improvements that they've made to the transformation. First up, we have the secure torso connection, and it is so secure that you cannot pull it apart. There is a locking mechanism once it all comes in together. So the trick to detach it is to open this and then give the cockpit a pull, like that. And now it has come loose, it is detached. So the way the locking mechanism works is the peg has a small uh, latch in it, right there. And then inside the peg hole is a little clip up inside there so when you push it in it clips onto that also the chest area they've put a little peg underneath in there just like that just that little tiny peg it is a tight fit you can see i don't know if you can see that or not there is some of the maroon paint coming off from the underside because that peg hole is very very tiny I don't know if you can see that there you go. Right there, very tiny. I don't think that would work. MP11 scale, um, you'd probably snap that off, but they could, on MP11 they could put a rectangle tab. Doesn't have to be a stalk like that. Same on the other side. Now when putting it back, because um, it is still a thin peg, you do want to be careful, so you've got to sort of push it from the top to get, the, get it lined up right, and then it will go in really smoothly. So to help secure the large panels in jet mode, they've added these tabs uh, to the back of the legs here. And you can see there's a hole in the wing, so when you fold it down, just it just tabs in like that. It's not, so that one doesn't stay in at all. It's not a secure tab on this, but I think it's more to do with holding it in place when you lock the brake panel down. So that's a tight fit in there. Let me just give that a push. There we go, that's all snapped in place really well. I didn't notice it earlier while transforming, but I'm actually missing a screw from here. So that section just... It's only being held in by the actual wing hinge. That's concerning. I think I've got some spare screws laying around to fix it, but um, I hope not many of them come like that. Now you see there are a couple of small tabs there and there. Um, they go into the back of the legs there, just to hold it all in secure. Um, do make sure that you have these knee ratchets lined up properly, or the legs won't collapse. Just push that in, line that up. There we go, perfect. No wobble in that, that's a lot of weight I'm putting on there, I might just cut that out. <laughs> but um doesn't make a sound, but you give it a good squeeze. Nothing, not like Takara, which sounds like an old deck chair. That is just so secure, that is really held together well. Uh, except that bit's coming done while manipulating it. Now that I look, I seem to be missing a bit. Actually, I'm missing this cover. Didn't notice that before, that's a shame. I wonder if it's come off somewhere. There it is, all finished on its stand, and that just looks absolutely fantastic. I just love the look of that. I was always a fan of the green screen color, but seeing it this big, and in this higher quality, it just, I'm blown away. Same with in bot mode, there is a slight amount of wobble um, when moving it, but if you've got to understand, you're not really moving it, are you? The connection underneath is exactly the same as on all the other MP11s, so 
wasn't really engineered for this sort of weight and size, but still it works well. And of course, like all MP11s, you still have the air brake, still have the nose cone, still have the opening cockpit. The flaps are um, a little bit problematic. When you move them, they, they just want to pop off. But um, they're on joints that aren't sealed, so when they pop off, they just, they just clip back on um, without any damage. So, final opinion on this guy, I absolutely love him. Mine did have a number of faults as I detailed throughout the video. I'm hoping that they're just because this is a sample, it's been handed around a bit, doesn't quite have the QC of the final retail product. I have my retail CG01, which I haven't had much time to look at just yet, but hopefully in the coming weeks I'll be able to do a quick comparison video just detailing the quality differences between the sample and the retail release. Even with those few small sample issues, I 10 out of 10 would buy again. And speaking of issues, I did find that screw cover on my floor after all. So do yourself a favour, go out, find this guy. I think last time I looked he was going for about 140 Australian dollars, so it's pretty reasonable value. In the coming few weeks, I am trying to source a Tanaka MPF-11, their oversized Starscream, and I'll do a very detailed comparison between these two and him. Remember to like and subscribe, plus check out our Facebook. Then sit tight and strap in for our next release.